What's going on guys? Mike here. Today, we got our seat in. We're gonna go ahead and uh, get this mounted in the car and fit it and all that. It is a Ultra Shield full containment seat. Required now, I believe now it is required, which it didn't matter anyway, I was, end up, I was gonna end up getting one. So it's a full containment seat. It's got the thicker right side head support and the, I believe it's a one inch shorter. Uh, left side head supports so you get in and out of the car easier. It's got shoulder supports on both ends There we go rib supports So it's an ultra shield full containment uh, Sprint seat. It's a 10 degree layback and It will fit nicely in this hyper chassis So what we're gonna go ahead and is go ahead and get our fitment I've already kind of mocked it in there to where I want it. I'm gonna end up doing a straight up and down Some guys like a little layback I want mine kind of straight because the A-frame here already has a rake back, which I'm fine with. I like that contour there. So it fit nice, it's comfortable in the car. But I'll sit in the seat and kind of show you how it's gonna look. There's the seat there. You can see I still have good vision to my left side, I still have good vision on my right side. This doesn't, it's angled downward, it's a sprint seat, so you can see past the head support. So you're not, you know, you don't have this in your way. You can't see out of the right side of the car. Same thing with the left side. But again, it's an inch or two shorter on the left side. So you get in and out of the car easier. It's got the rib supports. It's got the shoulder supports. So it holds in place. On the right side, again, pad has a lot more padding. Because this is most of your uh, force is going to go to the right side if you get an incident. But other than that, though, it's a 10 degree layback, ultra shield, sprint seat, uh, partial cover. Very comfortable. Nice padding. I am going to add a crash pad to the bottom of the seat, which is just like another extra layer of uh, SFI foam, impact foam. So that will raise it up a little bit, but it'll just come back down again. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and basically take the seat, stick it in the car, start mocking up where it's going to go, center the seat in the car, and uh, start running some bolts and get it put in. On the Hypers, everything is threaded, which is really nice. So these can thread out from the top into there. You can run bolts on the bottom if you want to. Same thing with the top. They thread in which is nice, and again, there's all the way open on the back, so you can run bolts to lock it down. But I'm gonna run it in. On the top, you're gonna use flat washers, so that way it won't pull through, and you got a lot more surface area to spread the load. Same, with, the same thing with the bottom. And what I'm gonna do too, on the top of the A-frame, I'm gonna add another brace that comes around here that attaches to the top of the head support. But just to show you, everything's just screws in. Put a bolt here, put a bolt there, and then two bolts on the bottom. You may have to re-tap them if you just got the chassis powder coated. All right, we can go ahead and uh, lower our seat into place now. You guys are wondering why my angles are so weird is we don't have anyone really around to videotape all the time. So that's probably why my angles are a little bit weird, but go ahead and drop the seat in, get about halfway in. I'm gonna let the arm guard catch it. Try to reposition my hands, grab it up top. Fish it around the wing posts. Caught on here. So now we can go down in here. I put tape on the back of the A-frame so I don't scratch the uh, heck out of the uh, frame. I already did. So trying to prevent any more scratching. So now that's pretty much in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the seat back now to where I want it. And once I kind of get it where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and measure out the seat, make sure it's square in the frame. Equal on both ends, and make sure I get enough. So that is the seat in there right now, just kind of mopped in. So inside of the car, there's the bottom seat bar. It'll show it. There it is down there. There's the bottom seat bar for the frame. Comes over, so that'll be a place to mount to. Come to the back here. At the back here, we have the two threaded spuds to come to the back of the seat. And then up top here, where my tape is, I'm gonna run collars that come to the top of the head support and mount here too. So I'm gonna have a total of four places I can mount the seat securely too. But, so the seat fits in there quite well. It still clears the frame and stuff like that. Head support will clear the body and all that. But now what we're gonna do is go ahead and measure across, make sure everything is Equal. I like the seat in the center. I don't like it having an offset more to the right or the left because then you just throw off the handling and you, it could be a mess. But 
that's in there now we're gonna go ahead and just center it up and uh, start mocking holes and then we'll uh, get it bolted down one of the other things on this car I was talking about so if we look at the seat where the seat gets positioned compared to the axle I actually have the axle the axle is in the forward position so it's gonna be close but I actually have the seat moved forward quite a bit now this axle is not in the lowered position the axle is actually on jack stands right now so it is weighted and if I push down on the car I can get again the simulated height of the axle as far as coming towards the seat but with the wishbone setup it keeps the axle basically true to the car it doesn't move it inward like a z-link or anything like that so i don't have to worry too much about the axle hitting the seat unless a wishbone breaks or the car gets torn up where it shoves the axle on the back of the seat that's just something you really can't avoid but it does have the bar part of the roll bar here which is closer to the axle than the seat so it'll hit that roll bar before it actually hits the seat itself all right, so we went ahead and squared the seat inside the car. We're exactly three and a half inches from middle point here for the middle of the frame to the bottom of the seat. Same thing with the front here with the shifters, center frame over the front of the seat. So we're 13 and a half there towards the front as far as the back and the sides. We're three quarter on each side of the frame rail. So we're nice and square in the seat. So now we're gonna go ahead, if you're by yourself, put some weight in the bottom of the seat, mark your bottom holes. The rear, we'll have to pull the tank out and mark from the back side of the spuds so we can get towards the front of the seat here. And then the front, the tops here, we'll make some brackets to secure the top head support to the A-frame of the car. All right, so we get the bottom of the seat mounted in. It's all squared up to the center section of the car as well as the back side of the car. As far as bolting that in, what I did was is from the bottom of the frame where it comes up, is underneath here the seat bar is I took my punch just go up well the bolts in there now but you go up there you stick it all the way in you pop it make a make an indentation on both sides after that pull the seat forward or back drill your holes and you are gonna have to drill them at an angle because if you drill them straight your bolts gonna want to go in crooked because you see the seat bar comes in at an angle it's got a degree to it so your bolts are going to go in at a degree and also after you run your bolts through you need to use fender washers a thick fender washer to spread the load of the bolt so if you get in an incident it spreads the load of the bolt to the seat instead of just on the bolt because the bolt itself may rip through at least with that those washers it'll spread the load out so it has to rip more of a surface area out of the seat to rip the seat out so now we're going to go ahead and do the back side of the seat the upper portion we're gonna have to go ahead and remove our uh, fuel cell. Again, mark our holes and then go ahead and drill them through. And after that, we'll be good to go. And the bottom section, the middle section, the seat is mounted. All right, we got the tank out of the way. Gives us enough room. We can come in here and uh, go ahead and mount the back of the seat and get this thing bolted in. All right, we got the back bolts in there. And again, those will just come through the back of the spuds here on each end. In the bottom again, bottom we're going to use fender washers to secure it. Same thing with the top, we're going to use fender washers up top here. Kind of spread the load on it. That tape's there just for a measurement point. The only other thing is the top and... Uh, this thing will be done. These aren't the bolts I'm going to use. I'm going to replace them with titanium bolts. I'm going to use them washers. I'm going to clean them up, but I'm going to use them washers, but I'm going to change it with titanium bolts. Both the bottom, the top, and the uh, center section will all be changed out. And then the top here, again, just our C-clamp. Go around here. We'll pinch this around the frame. Bolt that through here. So that kind of holds... The headrest together too, keeping, kind of keeps gives more structure to the headrest here. We'll put two clamps there, one there, one there, bolt them through. So one, two, three, four, and five, six points of contact for the seat, which is what you really want on this side seat. And it is a fairly light seat too, so it's not like you know uh, some of the, I guess some of the Kirkleys can be heavier, but it's a fairly light seat. It looks like good quality. It feels really comfortable. 
And the best part about this seat is this right here. Made in America, made in USA. That's what's nice about racing, especially with the sprint cars. Most of the sprint car stuff is made in America. The only thing that's not made in America is my motor. But other than that though, most of the stuff, the frame and everything is made in Pennsylvania. I started looking it up and I can't manufacture the seat clamps for the back of the seat for what I can buy them for. The time to make them, the material cost, I can't beat what they offer for them. Butler's got them cheap, Kirkley's got them cheap. It would cost me just that 20 bucks just in, just in getting the material between gas to go get the material, the material cost. Uh, so I guess I'm just gonna order those and we'll put those in at a later time. But other than that though guys, I appreciate you guys watching. We're almost at 4,000 subscribers. We've got a giveaway coming up. We're waiting to 4,000 subscribers. We're gonna do something special there. But other than that though, this is kind of the completion of the uh, Ultra Shield uh, Sprint Seat. Uh, very simple install. Uh, not much else you could say about it. I mean, it's in, it works and you know, Max is just getting the body and everything put back together on it. And Other than that though guys, this completes our Ultra Shield Sprint Seat installation video. Not much of an installation video, but basically just bolted it in. As far as, I think this is build number, we'll call it number three. Uh, getting there slowly, waiting on some more parts from uh, Hyper to finish this thing up. Still waiting on the motor, spacers, and the correct plates for this so we can go ahead and put the motor on inside here. But that's it. You know, we got the seat installed. It's nice. I can see past this rest. I can see past that one. You know, I can see all the way around me. We'll get the new body on the car. We'll get the motor in, pedals, radiator, and all that. We'll get the thing wrapped. We'll get this here wing figured out. And I just unplugged my light. So I think I'm going to end the video there. Thanks for watching, guys. Rate, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next time.